Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I am Corey from Super Kami Guru 9000, and welcome to Star Wars for 100 Days, the ultimate fan countdown leading up to the release of Star Wars The Force Awakens. We are only five days away from the release of the seventh chapter in the greatest sci fi saga of all time. The Shroud of the Dark Side has fallen. Begun. The Clone War has. Last time I reviewed the abysmal Star Wars Episode One, a film which many hardcore Star Wars fans consider to be the worst in the series. But is it really the worst? Let's find out as I review Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. Just listen to that title, Attack of the Clones. Very similar to Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. The Phantom Menace being Darth Maul or the Sith in general really don't even show up until the last portion of the films. You're not going to see any clones attacking until the last 15 minutes of this movie. That being said, this is definitely a step up in terms of production value from Star Wars Episode One, but I think that's all it's got going for it. Set 10 years after the Phantom Menace, the Republic is in turmoil over the threat of civil war. Former Jedi Master Count Dooku is leading a group of Separatists going from planet to planet in different star systems, convincing them to join his cause. While this is going on, Padme Amidala is being targeted by bounty hunters and is nearly killed twice, once in a massive explosion and once in this crazy plot which involves a weird centipede monster. It's, it's ridiculous. And that's when we get to see the return of Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi and his headstrong apprentice, Anakin Skywalker. Anakin is finally reunited with his true love, Padme, which frankly is kind of creepy at first, especially their first interaction. And for some odd reason, after all these assassination attempts, the Jedi Order feels it's necessary that Anakin goes with Padme, because what could go wrong? While that's going on, Obi-Wan Kenobi is investigating the assassination attempts and stumbles upon a massive secret that not even the Jedi Order nor the Republic know about, but completely sign off on the deal at the end of the day because of how cool it is. They have a secret clone army which is being made for them on the planet of Kamino. All of these stories eventually do converge on one another, which begins the Clone Wars. The good news is, this time, the story has a lot more focus than Episode 1. We actually do have some main characters here. We know to follow Obi-Wan's story and Anakin's story. Sunrise, sunset. The problem is Anakin's story. It is really bad. But before we get to that, let's talk about the characters of Attack of the Clones. The main three leads of this film are Obi-Wan Kenobi, Anakin Skywalker, and Padme Amidala. That being said, this film has hundreds of characters added to it. We get to see the return of fan favorite characters like Yoda and Mace Windu, and thank God they don't just sit around talking in this movie. They finally get some badass lightsaber battle scenes. We also get to see a number of aliens and monsters, all different shapes and sizes, droids that battle, droids that are caricatures of 1950s waitresses at a diner. We also get to see some great villains like Count Dooku, Jango Fett, and the manipulative Darth Sidious. Ewan McGregor returns to play as Obi-Wan Kenobi, and he has a lot more free reign here, and really brings this character to life. Wise, powerful, and incredibly funny, but still struggling to train his apprentice, Anakin Skywalker. This time around, Anakin Skywalker is played by actor Hayden Christensen, who, despite I think actually being a pretty decent actor, just doesn't really do a great job with the script that was given to him. Although, that's the thing. This was the script that was given to him. This is what he had to read. And holy crap, did they portray Anakin as this whiny, pouting, almost sociopathic obsessive creep. Anakin's interest in Padme doesn't come across as loving. It comes across as... Whether this was intentional or not, it's hard to say, but the shoddy script isn't doing anyone any favors. Natalie Portman, who I think is an amazing actress, does a pretty okay job in this film, but again, it's all hindered by the bad script. There's that, and is it just me, or is Padme just the biggest cock tease ever in this movie? Just look at the fireplace scene. It's pretty infamous not only for its awkwardness, but for its dialogue. The good news is this movie has way more villains, and they're all really awesome. My favorite character from this film, without a doubt, is Jango Fett, played by Tamara Morrison, who also plays every single clone in the movie. Despite the fact that most of them are CG creations, we actually do get to see his face from time to time, and he also happens to be the father of fan-favorite Star Wars character Boba Fett. So we finally get to see the origins of not only the entire clone army, which eventually became the Imperial Stormtroopers, even though they're not all entirely clones, but also the origin of Boba Fett. 
two birds, one stone, and it just so happens to be probably one of the best parts of this movie. We also have Christopher Dracula Lee as Count Dooku, who is, without a doubt, the best part of this movie, and that's because his classical acting skills just bring so much menace to Count Dooku. Count Dooku? Count Dracula? I don't think this was a coincidence. Darth Sidious, unfortunately, is downplayed in this film, but we'll definitely get to see more of him in Revenge of the Sith. Jar Jar Binks' role, thankfully, is also reduced. He only has a few bits of dialogue, but he does have one important part in the film where basically he's responsible for Palpatine becoming the Emperor. It all happens in another one of those riveting Senate scenes. The fact of the matter is, there are still a ton more characters in the film that, frankly, I just don't have the time to talk about. Aliens, droids, monsters, humans, Jedi, they're all over this movie. I would need like 10 hours to talk about all of them, but there's no way I'm going to spend that much time talking about Attack of the Clones. So what exactly is it that brings this movie down? Well, it's a brutal combination of bad dialogue and really awkward acting. Not to mention the love story which goes on between Anakin and Padme. It's really hard to watch. By the end of the movie, I don't really believe in their true love. There's a lot of cliche moments like rolling around in the grass, awkward first kisses, and that abysmal fireplace scene which has some of the worst dialogue ever written. Believe me, I wish that I could just wish my feelings away. The good news is the action in this film is kicked up to 11. There are a number of amazing sequences. The opening one with Anakin and Obi-Wan chasing the bounty hunter through Coruscant, while an incredibly busy and CG-laden scene, is really awesome to look at. It's also our very first glimpse of Jango Fett. We also have Obi-Wan Kenobi fighting against Jango Fett on the perpetually reigning planet of Kamino. Definitely my favorite action scene from this film because we get to see some lightsaber action, some blasters, some hand-to-hand -hand combat, them falling over the side and using their weapons to try and survive. It's a really action-packed scene. I totally dig it. Not to mention we get an epic space battle which also involves the Slave One, which is the signature ship of Jango and Boba Fett. And getting to see it in action finally is just really a feast for the eyes. And then it all ends with this ridiculous sequence where all of our characters are fighting against these monsters in this gladiator pit. The clones come in like freaking white knights with the Jedi. And then that's the beginning of the Clone Wars. The scale and the epicness of that final battle is amazing because everybody gets to do something cool. Lots of Jedi we've never seen before, battle droids, clones. Mace Windu decapitates freaking Jango Fett. And then it all ends with Yoda versus Count Dooku. This is a big moment. You're so exhausted by this point in the movie because of everything that's just been thrown at you for the last like 15 minutes of the film. You see the Death Star is actually getting ready to be rebuilt. Obi-Wan and Anakin lose against Count Dooku. Anakin loses one of his arms and then suddenly Yoda shows up, freaking pulls out his lightsaber with the force and has this amazingly badass fight with Count Dooku. Seeing this moment in the theaters was amazing. The entire crowd was cheering when Yoda showed up and was deflecting all of Dooku's attacks. And when he ignited that lightsaber, whole crowd went silent for about two seconds and people were getting out of their chairs. This was a big moment. We've never seen Yoda in an action scene before. He was just the Mr. Miyagi of the universe who was constantly holding back. And here, he kicked all sorts of ass. The final scene of the film is probably my favorite, when all of the clone troopers are getting ready to go to war, loading into the battleships, and you hear the classic Imperial March. This was the first moment that, to me, the prequels felt like Star Wars. I'm not sure if Episode 2 is worse than Episode 1. I'd like to think that they're on par with each other. That being said, despite the fact that the love story of this film just completely sucks bantha balls, this is still a pretty entertaining film to look at. There's a lot of cool, kooky aliens, the action scenes are crazy, and the villains really make this movie a lot. So, if you're going to watch this movie, I highly suggest watching it with friends, downing some alcoholic beverages, kick back and relax and don't think about it too much. It's definitely not the worst, but it's definitely not the best, and just like episode one, it really hasn't aged all that well. The good news is there is a dim light at the end of the tunnel because next time I'm going to be reviewing Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Easily the best of the prequel films. But is it without its problems? Find out next time.
So there it is, my friends, my review of Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. Are you a fan of this Star Wars movie? Did you see it when it was released in theaters for the very first time? What's your favorite scene from this film, your favorite character, your favorite moment? Do you absolutely hate this movie? Please tell me why in the comment section below, and make sure to tell me what you want to see from Star Wars. The Force Awakens. Thank you guys for watching this review. Make sure to like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys again for watching, and as always, may the Force be with you.